All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the state of Corvex as he is released. First and foremost, I think he looks sick. Uh, and his theming is great. He's like basically like a cement nuclear reactor man, and that's super fun. However, he unfortunately kind of has some issues as of his current release. Uh, so we're going to be talking about my initial build for him and such, and also uh, his base powers, and then what I'm helmeting over his base powers, uh, to kind of fix him as much as possible. So first and foremost, uh, let's talk about some abilities. Uh, he has his one, which basically slams down this tower. This pulses radiation damage and has some extremely minor synergies with his two and his four. Um, but this puts radiation on enemies. Big downsides with this. Its range is not great, considering it is line of sight only. If it does not have line of sight with enemies, it will not hit them. Also, its damage is obscenely low. So, in terms of damage, you're not going to get anywhere. And also, in terms of general usability, there are a lot of maps that just make this thing do actually nothing. And all it's really doing is spreading radiation status. It is by far his worst ability. If you are looking for something to helmet over, it's his one for sure. Beyond that, though, we have considerably better abilities uh, with his two. Uh, this is a clap that pushes all enemies that you hit with it into a perfect line. Uh, and also, for non-steel path, also does reasonable damage. It'll actually kill guys on non-steel path. You have, like, you know, about 150% plus strength. Regular path enemies will actually die to this, uh, and it's super fun to use. In addition to that, it has a damage vulnerability. I will say the damage vulnerability number is really, really low, uh, and I fervently wish that this thing had an armor strip instead, um, because that would just scale insanely, insanely better, especially if it was on every hit, because this thing does hit multiple times usually. After that, we have his three. So this is for him and the squad. Uh, he basically gets these little charges that prevent him from taking any statuses. Um, you get more of these if you kill enemies that have radiation uh, procs on them. So you and your squad are basically going to be status immune while your three is out. Uh, I will say, while that is not bad, I really wish that these did more, like had some synergy with his other abilities somewhere, um, or like buffed his damage, or gave him damage reduction, or something besides just limited status immunity. Um, would really go a long way, because he needs something. Uh, and then finally, we have his four, which looks great. It is basically just a big chest laser Iron Man Godzilla beam. It is just a big radiation wave. Uh, and this thing has some effects. It looks rather short, but the important stuff with it is that all you need to do is basically tag an enemy with it. If they get touched by it, they get the full effect of it. Uh, and it causes them to get 10 radiation stacks, uh, and then they start exploding whenever... They, they start exploding and radiation goes everywhere, basically. You fire it into groups for it to actually do anything. That does mean that if you shoot it at one guy, basically nothing happens. Uh, so you do need quite large groups, and they do have to be pretty close together in order for it to be effective. Uh, but, of course, his two is supposed to help with that, putting enemies into a line so that you can shoot a big chest laser right through all of them, hitting all of them and causing a big chain reaction. Uh, which, when you do that, in his in just his base kit, uh, with the stats that we have on now, you can see I have a few shards on here and everything. We're at 147% strength, that is with the shards, and 265% range. We can take these 195 Steel Path Heavy Gunners. And what we get out of his base kit is basically just this. Which is not bad. It'll leave some stragglers, and you can see the, like, damage on if I just do this to one guy is basically nothing. It needs you to hit a bunch of enemies, and they also need to be pretty close together for you to really get much done. Because the big thing is just that I had 20 enemies all sitting together, and you can also see that the survivability of Corvex is also not great. So, in this situation where you can simply stack 30 enemies all really close to one another, it's really good. And they also have to be totally vulnerable to this ability. And, you know, such and such things all need to compound together. But it can theoretically work. 
in perfect situations. The problem is that it needs perfect situations um, and doesn't really work outside of those. So that can be tough. Even on Steel Path with like super high enemy density, the kill rate of this is worse than like an okay primary or secondary. Um, and that's if you are really being specific about filling the parameters quite well um, with like, you know, only firing it down long hallways, growling the enemies into those hallways and doing all that stuff. Uh, and I will note that I say it's worse than just using a good primary or secondary, and that's with the fixed version of this build that has a Helminth. So his damage output is not very good, um, even when you're kind of giving him every single thing that he wants, which is to make them damage vulnerable and use your four. He really needs more. The build that we're using on him looks like this. So right now we're full Umbral because he is a health and armor frame, as you can clearly tell. Uh, I will note, he, without any other additional source of tankiness, um, he's still kind of weak. You really probably want to throw Adaptation on him instead of like Augur Reach, I guess. But he also really needs the range for the other stuff we're doing. Um, and he kind of just he kind of needs a lot of stats here, and he needs help. Uh, in terms of what his abilities are because of how finicky he is. But you can add, add Adaptation instead of Augur Reach, and that makes his survivability a bit less of a pain. Uh, but you'll note that across the entirety of his whole kit, I didn't mention a way to heal, and that means that he is a health tank with absolutely no sustain whatsoever built into his kit, which basically means that if you don't solve that in one way or another, whether that's through using like a melee weapon with Life Strike, which is horrible... Um, or using an Operator Arcane to heal him, which is highly inconvenient and super inefficient, uh, then you could include one of the Arcane sets that heals him for energy spent, which also he, he needs this strength, and he honestly really needs the Arcane Energize as well, in terms of sustaining his energy economy, even with Streamline. Um, and you could theoretically drop Streamline, but I probably wouldn't suggest it. Uh, it's tough. Like, fitting healing in here, I've basically just gone with, yeah, I guess the operator is going to have to be the one to heal him um, because it's basically free because I run a healing arcane on my operator anyway, just in case. Uh, and it's not great to be a frame that doesn't have any internal sustain to him. Um, in addition to that, because his four doesn't perform in steel path levels much at all, and uh, due to, you know, him needing kind of a little more survivability and uh, such and such, and also due to Pillar being terrible, uh, what we've done is we've subsumed Terrify on him. So Terrify, luckily, uh, the enemies running away is actually kind of fine for you because you only really need to tag them with your four in order for them to do their stuff. Um, like, and just explode a bunch and hit a bunch of other enemies. And this is a full armor strip when combined with corrosive projection with this much strength. Obviously, this bumps up to 100% eventually with Molt Augmented anyway, but we really want that strip right off the bat so that he can start getting something done. Um, Terrify, gotta say, it's not perfect here. It's a circle, and just like his main ability, actually, just like this, the pillar has this exact problem as well. Uh, Corvex is a Warframe that is about straight lines. Um, you've got the straight line of containment wall, and you've got the straight line of Crucible Blast, and those are like his two abilities that do stuff. You want to put enemies in a line, and then shoot them in a line, and then you want them to die. That's the idea. Unfortunately, there's no helmet we can give him that does that satisfactorily, so we're just going to have to substitute that with Terrify, because we need an absolute ton of range in order for the explosion radius to be kind of fine on Crucible Blast at about 20 meters here. You can drop Augur Reach, and that puts you at 18.8, which is workable, but it's starting to get on the line there um, in terms of what's going to work in regular maps. Obviously, the Simulacrum. He's a Simulacrum hero. He can really show off well there. Uh, but in real missions, it doesn't work super well. Um, um, you really... And you absolutely have to have like at least like overextended tier range. If you're not at least at 200%, then his 4 is just not even worth casting, I would say. Uh, unless you were going to try and go for like putting larva on him or something. But at that point, we're talking about just like kind of wasted effort in trying to get that stuff going because yes, it will scale, but also you could just shoot a gun and do a larva and it would do much, much more. So yeah, we're on Terrify. Uh, Terrify is going to make this look a lot better uh, and it does work, but it is very clunky. Like making this work in a regular mission is not phenomenal, uh, but... 
it does look really nice here. Like, it'll, it kills not all of them, most of them. They do still run away, which is problematic. That is, you know, the usual Terrify problem. But without going, like, whole hog and being like, well, you require full shards, all Tau, 75% strength, uh, coming from that and, like, getting somewhere where you can use Pillage, which also gives you survivability. Like, you could invest all that in him. But you might as well probably just play regular Hildren if you're going to plan to do Pillage stuff that way because her abilities are better at dealing damage in general than Crucible Blast. And she can fire guns while she does it, and she synergizes with, of course, her own Pillage by her DPS being a circle instead of a line, um, which is just going to perform better overall. Also, Hildren's harder to kill than he is and has self-sustain in her kit. So, yeah, it's... It's pretty tough out here. It's not great. I think that he feels super fun to play. Like, I love using his abilities. It's just that they don't do much. Um, I have tried this with, like, you know, upwards of, like, 250, 300% strength. Um, swapping out, like, Augur Reach in favor of, like, Transient Fortitude. Because he doesn't need this much duration. A lot of his stuff doesn't really care about duration. Um, outside of, like, the Terrify timer. And then usually his one's normal timer. But his one's awful. So you don't have to worry about that. Um... And it just doesn't really do better. Like, you can make it do way worse by removing a bunch of range. Uh, and then he just kind of will shoot a guy and it won't do anything to anyone else around him. But it's it's not very good. He is not synergistically built. Uh, he would do a lot, a lot better if he had some kind of inbuilt armor strip in his kit. Um, my suggestion personally in like terms of a way to fix him is just to make this ability good you could add two things to this ability and pretty much just fix it right off the bat because the synergies that this thing has if you use your four on it it pulses a bunch which because this thing does meaningless amounts of damage that doesn't matter using your two on it makes it do the same thing uh so it pulses a bunch this synergy doesn't matter uh and i think a thing that could actually fix this ability is if you slam it down and while you're within the radius of it if using your two or your four stripped armor by like a base 50%. So if you got to 200% strength, it would full strip armor. If you used those abilities while standing in the aura here, um, that could go a long way towards making this be like, oh, well, this gives you an armor strip. And then therefore your two and your four can actually do stuff. If he had an internal armor strip, you could probably branch out into some other helmets to like help him on the damage front. Probably, you know, opting to remove his three in favor of Roar or something to actually give him a better time doing damage. Um, or, you know, like a large damage buff from his one on his two and his four could also go a long way. And then you'd still maybe remove his three for an armor strip at that point. And maybe just, you know, I don't know. He needs, he needs stuff. He, it looks really flashy uh, and he's super cool. I love his visual design. But numbers-wise, in terms of fighting enemies at high level, he's just not there. For fighting low-level guys, super fun. Just, like, smashing walls and shooting laser beams and having a good time. Uh, but in terms of being effective at Steel Path level, you can get by, but it's not very good. That being said, we are going to take him to Steel Path. Uh, and just to show off a bit uh, of what he is doing in those missions. So, I uh, hope you enjoy that. But yeah, Corvex's release date, like, he's not bad or unusable, but he's like a mid-low B-ranker, which is fine, I guess. Alright, jumping into our usual Steel Path, Koopa Fortress. Get something done, I suppose. Uh, I will say it is actually kind of likely um, that I die. Uh, because I am not using Adaptation. But there's not much to be done about that. You probably could get away with on this build if you wanted to open up his Exila slot and put Cunning Drift there. Then putting Adaptation where Augur reaches. Uh, but currently that's an amount of investment in this Warframe that I'm just honestly not willing to do. Because uh, he's not... Oh no, I am on the build that doesn't have an armor strip. Well, we'll see how long this works for. We'll see what he can do without an armor strip, I suppose. Which probably means I'm going to stop using my abilities pretty soon. And whenever XMI start spawning and things.
Regular enemies do die. Once we start seeing Eximus and stuff, you'll see some more weaknesses of him, where his four kind of just doesn't do actually anything to Eximus, uh, which is unfortunate. You can see the Koopa Fortress is actually like kind of an ideal environment for him because his beam is extremely long and um, can easily like cover a whole hallway. So you're kind of getting the best possible performance here. Just like bouncing back and forth and like shooting whole hallways of guys. A thing that I will note about him is if you are in regular path, you're pretty much only going to get kills with the actual beam itself because the little like explosion pops off of enemies rely on them still being alive. So unfortunately, you can't just kill enemies and kind of like create these like radioactive explosion areas, which probably would make him very good actually if it like took the time to give you every explosion off of enemies. Uh, that would actually be probably really, really solid. Uh, it does not do that. If an enemy dies, uh, all of the damage that would come from them, from your four, goes with them. Uh, which is super unfortunate. That also is like a potential change that could uh, really fix him up in terms of like what his damage output is and like can be. Uh, you can also see, despite his passive being plus three punch through, uh, his four does not go through doors. Uh... So his four does not benefit from his passive. Uh, his passive is mysterious. I guess the explanation for his passive is that you can line enemies up and then you can just shoot them with the three meters of punch through. Which is fine, I guess. Uh, but not exactly a stellar passive for like working into like what his kit kind of seems to want to do. I will say the hotfix today seems to have fixed the bug. Uh, where sometimes his four just would not deal damage to enemies it was going through. So that's good. Uh, that would usually only happen at, like, pretty decent ranges. Uh, but it was a problem. You can see the Xmas here. I'm gonna have to use a Parazon finisher on them, because just using my four, they're basically just never gonna die. And that's a, it's gonna be a common issue, which is the most dangerous enemy. Uh, kinda doesn't give a shit about you using your four on them. Like, you can see even this Shock Eximus, which is just a Butcher, um, re doesn't take hardly any damage whatsoever from this, uh, from this ability, which is not good. That is a, that is a real shame, considering this ability's performance is entirely dependent on, like, full enemies. Because you can see this is the last guy left, and now, even though this is a Jester, like, one of the lowest health things we could have spawned in, just doesn't do anything. Like, the, the enemies... Like, radiation explosions don't hit themselves, which is real unfortunate. Uh, I will slam this down, just so you can see that it doesn't do anything, I guess. I will put radiation on them a little bit, which is fine. You can see right here, just nothing nothing of consequence. Really, just like you having to use Parazon finishers on them. Uh, in terms of Acolytes, uh, you, you, as you might imagine, it's like... Not great. It does, like, you know, shield shield damage-wise look kind of impressive, right? But you get beyond that and, uh, yeah, unless they're near enemies, then it's kind of okay. Uh, but unless they're near enemies, it, it becomes not so good. Uh, so just shooting them is very much advised. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any kind of significant damage buff or anything uh, to make shooting them better, even though that is what he is going to have to resort to on pretty much all Eximus. And also all special units. Uh, but that just... You know, that that really just goes into what we're talking about here is... You know, uh, you need some help. Oh, never I spoke too soon. That bug does appear to still sometimes happen. So, ignore that. Yeah, I mean... I don't think I particularly need to, like, say more here. I think this, this really, like, goes to show, like... It's okay... You can see we've spent almost five minutes. I'm actually at a 444 kill rate, which is actually better than I've done in any of my previous tests with him, which is notable. Um, I think it's because I got such a such a good tile setup. It's really perfect for him. But it's you know, it's just not fantastic. Like the moment you you branch out of this like kind of like perfect scenario for him, it's gonna go not great. Like even like something like this, where it's like kind of a straight line. The damage output is, like, just considerably worse. Because as enemies get further apart from one another and don't stand perfectly straight, like this, for example. 
Like, the, the kind of nothing happened to these guys, really, right? Like, these are just normal Lancers. Um, but even still, like, they're surviving, like, you know, like, five seconds or so standing in, like, his explosions whenever they are kind of in a group, right? Which is just not stellar. And the Xmas not dying, and... Yeah. And obviously, a, a group of Xmas isn't going to help any. They pretty much just take zero and go on about their day. Yeah, that's that's what's up with Corvex. Um, yeah. <clears throat> he needs some help. Some damage output help. An armor strip somewhere. Something. Uh, I suspect probably nothing will happen. Uh, and he will eventually... Uh, get an augment that gives him an armor strip somewhere that will kind of fix him but that'll be pretty unfortunate too since he's already really strapped for mod slots uh so if he if he gets an augment that is like an attempt to fix him like you know like Geyer got one of those then that's pretty much gonna be just unfortunate like I mean because Geyer is not exactly the bee's knees with her fixed her augment either uh, and it's always sad to see those because it means the Warframe's usually just not super playable without it. But yeah, uh, we're not even going to bother to go to 10 minutes. You you, you get it uh, in terms of what his performance is looking like. It's fun, and it, do it does okay. It does fine. Uh, it did, did much better there than it has been doing in my prior tests, if I'm honest. Um, but it's just... Yeah, he just needs stuff to go with it. Like, using the armor strip is usually, like, how I would get to about this. Um, but it's tough. Yeah. Wish he was... Wish he was better. Hopefully that happens. All right. Whispers in the Walls has arrived, which means many new guides are on the horizon. Uh, and thank you very much to all of my patrons for the support, especially $10 patrons, Alex Parnum, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Nuvin, Automatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Kane Alathra, Dylan Dworski, Athrain, Mavon, James Harsthorn, KC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lord Acorn, Lou Zanth, uh, Mikkelkel, Inti Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Remoxidate, Sharp, Camarillic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Tomeworm, Victor Palmer, Waifu Wars, and Wadad 1. Uh, and also, of course, Thank you very much to all of my $5 patrons as well. It is much appreciated. Uh, lots of new guides coming with Wizards in the Walls. And also, uh, they changed new player progression again. So I need to redo the CPR that did just release. Uh, but that shouldn't take too much time. And we should have an updated new player guide uh, for the entire chunk that's already out very, very soon. Uh, they did improve it, though. So good stuff. <laughs>